Thank you everyone for coming on to this special edition of our guest speaker interview. Yes, we had some technology issues that it just won't allow us to go live together. That's okay, we overcome it and we're doing this recording for you. As I know that a lot of people can't come in on live anyway, so it's okay. Whenever that, if you got uh, a question that you wanted to ask us, please put it into the comments so uh, Anita or myself can come back into and actually support you. So Anita, thank you so much for doing this with me because it was last minute, we only planned it yesterday and it is because of the incident that we experienced in Sydney Bondi Westfield that they have um, triggered a lot of people's emotion and triggers and I know that our group is not somewhere that we talk about politics or anything like that but I think this one hit us quite hard and it is not about that oh we're comparing to all the other incidents that has happened as well okay we're not doing that we're not comparing who's actually worse and who's who's needed more help I only wanted to support people that who are triggered it, it you can relate it to whatever situation you want but it's more that to, but today's topic it will be about all of us that who are triggered during the weekend incident in Bondi that how are we trying to understand our body why we're reacting that way and where those triggers come in and things like that so Elida please introduce yourself <laughs> Hello, thank you, Martha. I'm really happy to support anyone that's troubled by what's happened on the weekend. My background is as a trauma psychotherapist and I've been working in the field 29 years. I came into it out of my own personal journey of trauma from childhood and adult domestic violence. So I've been in my own therapy process previously for over 10 years. So I know it personally, the experience of trauma and trauma totally impacting my whole world. And also through, you know, I don't know how many clients over 29 years. And I've also mm -hmm. fought and supervised in the field as well. So um, I've spoken with a lot and a speaker in the field as well. So I've heard a lot about people's journeys, not only from my own clients, but through mm -hmm. um, a whole range of different ways. And I really love sharing um, simple, practical information and, and strategies to help people because especially with social media we get we hear a lot more and see a lot more detail than what we used to and it really does impact us so mm. happy to help out today Martha. Thank you so much for helping out because like I know that I'm going to interview um, Anita again on officially on a guest speaker interview but because of what happened on the weekend I, I have this addiction as well trying to find out what's going on and even that I'm not involved in it but it is an area that I do live in Sydney it is an area that I do go around to that places as well and even just thinking about it give me that sadness in my heart so Anita, can you explain to us why we are feeling this certain way, even that like it may not be personally known to us? And unfortunately, one of the uh, victim was actually one of a friend's friend as well, the relative. So it does probably hit me even harder knowing that. So like, you know, how why are we actually responding this way? Why is all that grief and sadness that we're feeling and experiencing now? Yes. Um, and as a yesterday even my daughter was talking to me about it on the phone yesterday so it is impacting a lot of people and we're in Melbourne um, so there's four primary reasons that I understand that why people are so impacted beyond the naturalness of it's a shocking tragedy of what happened um, the the first thing that I want to say is we're meaning making creatures and so when something happens, our brain is very, very associational, like the branches of a tree. And so it will go searching for how does this relate to us? Are we safe? Like it wants to locate us in relation to the tragedy to work out our safety. And so because the brain's associational, it will go check out a whole range of different things in our system. And that can mean that it hits on unresolved trauma in our system. Mm. Now, our conscious mind might not relate this experience to some trauma that we've experienced. Mm. But as I shared with you yesterday, I know of one young woman who, when she heard about the tragedy with the amusement park when there were deaths, it 
hit on her trauma that she had buried from her childhood when she'd been fearful as a child of um, that her father was going to harm her and the whole family. And so if you look on a symbolic level, the playing, being carefree at the amusement park or just being at a shopping centre or having a cup of coffee and then a tragedy happens, it can hit on traumas like for this young woman, the trauma from domestic violence as a child where she'd be playing and then eruption of violence would happen. So I hope that makes sense, that example yes. that, you know, we can be doing something ordinary like shopping or in a cafe and something terrible happens can hit on other experiences of of trauma that don't seem very similar but have some resonance. So the mm. first is if there's something unresolved in our system, it mm. can light up. Mm. The other reason is um, our social media keeps us, influences and changes the way our brain is. And so we often are in a habit of search, search, mm. seek more, and seek more. And so that is, I think, another important reason why people are in the habit of scrolling and, and getting more information. The third reason that I think is very relevant, particularly um, for, for this group, is you may not know that women have a unique stress response that men don't have. Mm -hmm. And um, we have the fight, flight, freeze response that men have, but when they were originally tested on people they were only tested on men and it was assumed that women were the same and so a number of years ago a woman researcher did some testing to find out and it was confirmed that we do have the fight flight freeze response but we also have what she calls ending instinct and it's based on our hormones and when our hormones are a particular way when we're stressed it activates what she calls the tending instinct which is for survival originally we needed our tribe to survive so it was like women go to look after the family or the group tend mend and befriend always taking care of the group and so part of it may be that primal instinct to can be concerned about the group but that may leave us being a bit negligent on what do we need for ourselves so which I'll, I'll get to but the fourth reason that I wanted to share is when something shocking like this happens it activates feeling helpless and not in control and our system can find that unbearable when there's something related to something shocking and so my understanding is our system may want to keep seeking because it wants to get more information so that we can have a sense of control so that we can feel less helpless um, mm -hmm. and so they're the four primary reasons unresolved stress or trauma social media habits the female stress response and wanting to have a sense of control because when something unbearable happens, our system wants to know where it is so then we can feel okay with where we are. But actually maybe a fifth one is survivor guilt mm. because it's not happening to us. We mm. may feel some concern um, of how can I feel okay when that's going on. Yeah, And so it may hit on survivor guilt of how can I feel happy and carefree when that's going on. And if we don't know how to reconcile that, then any of those five elements can can impact us if we don't have enough resources. Oh, I hear you because I think that you hit on quite a few points, even just like I can't talk about from someone else's point of view. I'm only showing my personal experience and how I'm feeling it. And it's like that. Yes, you're right, because one of my own trauma was that uh, my dad did use a knife to actually stab me. So that was one of the one result trauma that I have. And looking at this now is like, yes, it was a knife, a knife attack. And I think that, oh, okay, that actually triggered me. And then my partner would ask me, like, why are you actually so into this? And I'm like, I can't explain it to you, but it's triggering me in some sense. And now that I hear was like, oh, yeah, unresolved trauma from my childhood. Yes, my dad did use the knife to stab me too. So that's how I actually feel that trauma in it. Uh, 
And the second thing is that um, you talk about uh, the survival guilt. On Sunday, I actually went to a uh, baby shower. So when you see a mother and a child being hurt, the next day you go to a baby shower. My God, that was hard. That was hard. So like, I didn't share too much about it before because that's just my own thing that I needed to deal with. But I hear you now that when you're explaining it, it actually made me understand why I'm feeling a certain way. And I always believe that by having clarity, it makes a huge difference of what you need to do next. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's oh, yeah. all good. <laughs> the brain, the brain is so associational. It will capture, you know, and it, it's like a live wire where if there's something unresolved, it lights up. And what happens is it doesn't just light up that incident, but it lights up anything associational with it. So we can feel walloped with so much because of all of the things that are connected to it. Um, yeah. Definitely. So, like, you know, how, how do we actually uh, move forward from this? Because, like, like as like my logical brain will tell me it is not me. It is not me that who are suffering in it. And I should be able to get myself out of it. But I know that a lot of us that who doesn't have the training, we don't know how to actually deal with it. So what are some of the suggestions that you can give to our audience here? Like if they're experiencing some of the emotion, like what I'm doing right now, what yeah. they can do to get themselves up again. Yeah, okay. So I want to share with you six simple things that you can do, yeah, because what I find is actually maybe seven. <laughs> um, there's just so many things that we can do. Of support. course. One of the things that I always encourage is trying to do it on different levels. So mentally, emotionally, physically, we want to support our system on all levels because our body absorbs what our mind finds hard to deal with. The muscles absorb stress to protect it from going to the organs. So we want to support the mind and the feelings, but we also want to support the body because that deals with everything that the mind doesn't know how to deal with. So yeah. I'll share a few different things and, um, Later in the day, I can add in the comments when you share it yes. some more information or videos of me doing certain things yes. so people copy um, what I, certain strategies of what I'm suggesting. That would be amazing. So it's not about minimising or um, denying what's happened because that just creates a pressure in our system. We want to be able to be with it in a way that, allows our system to get past the shock so our system can move on, yeah? Mm -hmm. So all of these things help support our system to be able to move on. So mm -hmm. I'll share the one that is um, the, it's it's based on EMDR, which is mm -hmm. the modality. And when each side of the brain controls the opposite side of the body, yeah, And so when we're in our natural everyday mode, there's a natural cross pattern that happens. Mm -hmm. But when we're in shock and overwhelm, our system disconnects. The corpus callosum, the nerve fibres between each hemisphere disconnect because it says there's too much coming at me. I don't know how to deal with it. So I'm going to disconnect mm -hmm. so that too much doesn't keep coming at me. Mm -hmm. So if you cross your arms to help mm -hmm. that cross pattern, and mm -hmm. then either under each armpit, mm -hmm. alternate tap, or if it's hard to reach, you can always do it like this. It's just mm -hmm. that there's an, a meridian point underneath here oh, okay. that is helpful if you can reach comfortably under there. Yeah. So what you do, this, this, you know, is one of the things I call a butterfly tap, mm -hmm. and you just alternate slowly tap there while you be with, whatever images, thoughts or feelings or body sensations are going on and you don't try to fix it or change it or anything, you just see it and feel it and keep tapping and breathing mm -hmm. and it will help your body not shut down, it will help your brain not shut down so your system can process it and if you keep doing it, you may start crying yes. or your brain may go to associational things or um, 
but if you just keep staying with it, keep breathing and allowing, it will there'll be a, a support what and your system will then of its own accord. Mm. You don't have to find the solution. Your system will come to a place of peace by itself because you've supported the brain and the body to be with the feelings without mm. blocking them or minimizing them or conflicting mm. with them. Yeah. So it just helps you to move on. Mm. It might feel hard to do on your own at first. Mm. Um, and that's when sometimes it can be useful to have someone support you who's yes. trapped. Um, but otherwise, keep sticking at it and and do it when you don't have to rush off to do something else soon because yes. your system will know if yeah. it can't open up into something big because I've got to go do that soon. Yeah. Don't do it half an hour before you've got to pick up the kids from school mm. or something. Give yourself, not that you'll need an hour, but if you mm. give yourself more than enough time, then your system can feel safe that it yeah. can drop to it, that there's enough time. Mm. The more you do this, the quicker your system knows, oh, I'm going to be okay, yeah. and it will connect to the feelings easier and you can process them a lot quicker. So that's Good. a processing tool that you can do on your own yeah. um, to help you if memories flash up or images to do with the news or thoughts or feelings or belief, whatever it is, whatever symptoms you've got. The other things are a bit more simple, but I just yep. thought I'll share that one because yes, that's please the do. one first. Yeah. So the other thing I can um, say is that essential oils smell mm. the fastest route to the brain. And oh, so okay. to support your mind-body system, when I was trained as a trauma psychotherapist many years ago, we used certain oils when we were working with trauma because I was also trained to use muscle testing with, with my clients. And when we muscle tested and the person's body, mind-body system showed that they had a lot of trauma, mm. If we found an essential oil, a pure essential oil that the person felt relaxed with, that when they smelt it, their body relaxed mm. and muscle tested the trauma, the muscle testing didn't show a trauma because it opens up the brain. Mm. So it takes the brain out of the stress response. So mm -hmm. then you can have more of its facilities to process it. So if you had the essential oils before you did the butterfly tap, yep. it's going to support your system to do it more easily. Yeah. So, you know, lavender is one of them that's known to be very um, great for stress or trauma. Um, geranium, bergamot, vetiver, and um, I'm trying to think what they are. Yeah. Or if you've got a scent that you know that you love, and relaxes you or you have good memories associated with, then you can use that. Just make sure it's a, not a synthetic one, but it's 100% pure essential oil. Um, so smell can help open the brain up because it has the yeah. So you can put it on, you know, diluted with another oil. Lavender yeah. does for most people doesn't need to be diluted, but most mm. oils do. And so you can either put it diluted with an oil or put it on a hanky or or something so that you can have it near you so you can smell it. Um, so oils is another thing to support the brain and the body. Right. Um, going out in nature is yeah. another one. As soon as we see nature, our central nervous system can relax, yeah? Mm -hmm. But if you go out in nature and your mind's still busy, then you might want to use the oil or the butterfly tap to support you, yeah? Right. Hugging someone for mm. long, not a quick hug, or mm. hug yourself, you know, mm. firmly, mm. Um, it can help our system connect to life energy. I'm trying mm. to give some simple things, yeah? Yeah, it's as, good. As other things. So hugging yourself or having someone else hug you mm. and just hold that hug till you feel a shift yes it can be really really helpful because we've got this fear in us or overwhelm and the hugging when it's firm mm. and heart to heart is yeah. um it helps our system feel that life energy and our mm. system can 
feel enveloped by that life energy. So yes. that that's another one. There's I'll put a link when you add it yep. in in the group. We'll do that for for some bilateral music, and mm. if you listen to the bilateral music with headphones, earphones, it moves sound ear to ear, and what that does it helps keep both sides of the brain talking to each other, and mm. for many people it relaxes the system and allows the system to keep processing. So you can do that with the oil, with the butterfly tap, yes. or you can do it separately. Yes. But it's just another way to support the brain and the body not shut down and That's keep good. processing, yeah? Mm. Um, what was it? I will put a link in there of me doing a mind-body exercise that's based on traditional Chinese medicine, based on my training my trauma training um, and it takes like three to five minutes to do mm -hmm. and what I recommend is for people to do that twice a day it will mm. keep your brain out of the stress response so your system can process it will ground you and center you and calm you down it will help mm. you be able to sleep or be able to digest so you can eat because sleep and digestion are often impacted when we're stressed because our system says it's not time to eat or rest because we've got to be on vigilant alert. Mm. So do exercise twice a day can help keep the brain out of the stress response. And so then you've got more of your brain that can respond to it in a more generative way. Yeah. So I'll put the YouTube link of me doing it on there so people can just follow me doing it. And as I said, it's based on Chinese medicine. Another simple thing that you can do, the last one I'm thinking to do for yourself, but you can also do it for someone else is, you know how sometimes when we're overwhelmed we'll go, oh, my God, yeah? Well, instinctively there's points here, meridian points that we can connect to so above the pupil of the eye where the bony point pointy bit comes out with the shape of the head if you put a thumb on one of those points and two fingers on the other you can do it to yourself or you can do it to a friend or a child whoever's overwhelmed now lightly pressing there you might not feel any pulsing if you don't feel pulsing it's because our frontal cortex is where we do our processing. And when we're under stress, the blood moves away from there and goes to the amygdala, the back of the brain, the survival mm. response. And so if you don't feel pulsing, you're probably in the stress response. Mm. But if you keep holding it there, it will help your system keep bringing the, the, the blood back to the frontal cortex. And that mm. way we can think and process, yeah? But mm. as well as holding those points at the front, you can mm. hold points at the back. Mm. Now, you might, where your head meets your neck, mm. thumb one side, two fingers on the other. I don't know if you can see me. Yeah. Yeah. On each side of the centre. Yeah. Right under where the head meets the neck. Yeah. So if you hold those points and you don't feel um, a pulsing there, you want to hold the front and the back till you can feel a pulsing feel a pulsing in both and then you know your blood's going all the way from the front to the back of the brain i see if your arms get tired then you can swap you can do it lying down and it rests one mm. of them again mm. like the butterfly tap it might take longer the first time because your system's unfamiliar and might be a bit tense but mm. the longer do it the more your system will remember and relax quickly and it's really soothing to have someone do this for you to yep. just hold those points mm. and and all you do while you're holding the points or being held is again like the butterfly tap you don't try and change or fix anything you just be with because you don't want to create an obstacle in your system yeah so want to be with the th thoughts and the feelings and know that as you hold this it's mm. going to help your brain keep processing it so you don't get stuck in it things mm. keep coming back when they're stuck in our system yes and so you want to be able to just support the brain and the body so our system can do what it needs to and after a period of time of doing this your system again will feel a, a nice memory or a realization or a sense of peace, or you'll feel a shift in your breath. 
and then you'll know your system's in a in a calmer place and you and you can stop but it's a nice thing to do for someone else too mm. That's quite wonderful tips there that you gave us. Thank you. Because like those action tip is what we can take. And I look forward to actually getting the links to put it into the comment as well for everyone to actually assess. Uh, it, it, it has been a very interesting weekend. There's so many things have happening, but um, I always find that just try to focus one thing at a time and solve one problem at a time. If not, you're just going to get overwhelmed. And don't be scared if you are triggered it. I know that a lot of us feel um, embarrassed even to a point that, oh, like, you know, I'm showing emotion. Oh, I'm having tears coming out. I have a little bit of a snur, just like what I did there. I'm not embarrassed with it. I have no issue with it because it is better to be able to feel so I can actually realize there's something to fix rather than trying to hide it in a box and trying to act this like this tough person that I've been for many, many years. So whenever that you feel emotion, if you feel anything, use our group to ask for support. You can put down the as a anonymous. No one needs to know who you are. And for those anonymous uh, people, you probably will realize that a lot of you I do reach out in private and just to ensure that you're okay and if they, you need any support. And that's my my power as an admin that I know who you are. And don't worry about that. I'm not going to wreck you out or anything. It's just that I want you to be able to get the right support that you need. Yes, because we do have training in our back that we wanted to be able to give you that huck, that air huck that you need to actually get going onto your day. Yes, and it's something really important to add on to what you said. When mm. we cry from stress, our body, the tears are different to the tears when you're cutting an onion, say. When you mm. cry from stress, you're actually releasing cortisol. Mm. So it's helping you. Mm. And um, our you know, we might have, as you were saying, it was so good what you said, different judgments or beliefs that have taught us to inhibit ourselves. Yes. Uh, and so if you can be kind to yourself and, and, and go, I just want to allow my system to let go mm. and, you know, think about whatever metaphors can help you, like, you know, in the aeroplane, we've got to put on our our safety vest before we put yes. on the trials. Yes. You know, if we want to be a great partner or a great mother or a great worker or entrepreneur, whatever, we want to be able to look after ourselves so that we can be there for our community. Yes. So being gentle on ourselves and not putting judgment on ourselves. And mm. even if you find it hard to do that, um, I teach a particular method of, self-talk so I'm not talking about affirmations mm. because affirmations can split the system with yeah. you know we might like the idea of it but have difficulty being with um, the idea of it like everything's working out perfectly it can be yeah. hard to believe in this kind of situation so to be able to say to yourself I like handing over um the, tr the bigger meaning of this to whatever it is that I believe in that's greater than me or to life energy mm. or to nature, like yes. find a way to speak something. And, and, and I find when these things happen, it's really important to look at our spiritual beliefs so mm. that we can hand it over to something that's greater than any human being because yes. some things are bigger than us. Yes. And I think we need to be able to hand it over, whether it's to God or Krishna or Jesus or nature or life energy yeah. be able to hand it over and just that act of being able to physically or mentally and energetically go I'm handing this over this is too big for me to manage mm -hmm. can be really helpful so that's another another thing that people can do Oh, that's beautiful because it is so true that we as a woman, as a tough woman, as a business woman, as an entrepreneur, as someone that who is a mum, uh, like uh, all of this title make us feel like that. Oh, we have to toughen up, soldier in, no matter what. And the truth is, yes, we could do it probably say 95% of the time, but it is those 5% that is going to break you. 
It is mm. those 5% that where you will feel so alone, so lost. But yes, because they have been accumulated. That is the hard part of it. And we keep pushing it under the rug because we think we need to save others first. That is yeah. the one thing that we often do as a woman. Uh, yeah. and, and it only means you are a good person. Okay, don't you give can. yourself that, that blame. Like, trust me, a selfish person will live very happily because they don't have that guilt. But as a good person, we feel, we compassionate, we empathize. So that's why we're feeling the way that we're feeling. And there's no shame about that. Put a, give a pack on your shoulder and say that just because I'm a nice person, I'm feeling this sort of way. Just because that I am a good person, that I know that there's something that I have to work on to actually get myself better. So it is a process of learning. Yes, there will be triggers, but triggers are not a bad thing. As long as you realize that it is a trigger and then you can overcome it and take your power back. Because I often say, I don't know if you agree with me and Dita, we get trapped by the past so much it could be just one incident that lasts for less than a minute but it traumatized us for over what i'm 45 this year um probably it happened 40 years ago when it happened but it traumatized us for life so if we really think about it deeply the motivation for you to overcome this trauma this trigger is to ask yourself when is the time to stop this BS? You could think of it as a belief system or the other one. Um, and it start looking after yourself. Because that's my sentence that I said to myself and many of my clients, when is the time to stop this BS and start looking after you? And it would shock their system and say, oh, really? I wasn't looking after me? I thought I have self-love. Because when people used to tell me about self-love, I'm like, I love myself. I eat the most expensive meal that you can afford. I buy myself the most hot, beautiful thing. I go on the loveliest, nice holiday all by myself. Solo travel. Was I happy? Yeah. I was lonely. I was very lonely. And I just keep using material to try to... To, to, to feel in that gap, but I still didn't understand what self-love was. So that was a big learning for me in my journey to overcome triggers and, and like, you know, feeling of being not enough. Oh, I've written a blog article about self-love and self-care and mm -hmm. those, those activities are beautiful and yeah. they're wonderful to do when they're aligned with that deeper level of self-care, mm -hmm. Of our thoughts and our feelings. Love what you said. And I love what you said about the holding on and when is it the time to be able to leave the past in the past. And it's not anyone's fault because yes. the brain the brain um works through feelings, not mm. through cognition, not through willpower, not through logic. Yes. The neural pathways develop and deepen through feelings. Yes. And so don't know how to take care of our feelings. Our brain keeps looping back to what it's done most recently and most frequently and where there's been the intensity of feeling. Mm. And so to be able to talk to ourselves in a loving, gentle, permissive way because holding on just accumulates. But my experience is everything always wants to move and the yes. only thing that uh, stuck you know, is, or still is what is stuck, trauma. And so yeah. if we can to ourselves and just let it keep moving mm. uh, and find inspirations to help us you know metaphors experiences that we've had experiences people have known to know that um, it's possible to move on it's possible for the past to be in the past yes um, is a is a good immediate thing to do till you learn more ways of being able to do it more easily yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Like anyone that who suffer, like, you know, a lot of us in our group have suffered DV. It's very, quite common on a second marriage as well. And a lot of us don't know how to be respected and treated um, in the right way. And I admit that I was one of those that who thinks that love must go full pain. Without pain, that's not real love. That's not true love, okay? I was those one that who was scared to even look at a romantic movie because I would fantasize and look at my life and like, my life is shit. Like, you know, how come people can do it this way? So 
a lot of us do have that experience and don't be afraid. You are not alone. Okay. You're not alone in this. You're not alone in your own feeling as long as you're willing to let someone come in. And I'm not saying to let anyone come in. Don't be silly. Okay. Go and talk to a professional. Go and talk to someone that who have the training, such as Anita and a lot of like different experts in our group. Go and talk to them because they can give you the 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 advice that is more uh science based. Put it that way. Like it's not, like everyone has good asylum life experience is 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 the best teacher in life, but it's more science based into it. That's the reason why you go to them because there's a science behind it. Yeah, and I agree. Like. From my own domestic violence experience, I'm telling myself, well, love is you be with the good and the bad, the sickness yeah. health. And so I kept on staying there. And But one day, you know, when I was trying to speak up for myself and, you know, he never paid attention to anything when I was trying to speak up for me or the children. And I got puzzled because I thought I'm being respectful, I'm being fair, I'm being forgiving, I'm being assertive. Why isn't it working? I thought assertiveness was worked. And I felt devastated to realise that assertiveness doesn't work with someone that doesn't um, follow the same values. Assertiveness yes. works with someone that's going to be respectful, not mm. someone that's going to be. And it just, you know, was one of those things that helped wake me up that um, you can talk and talk and try and explain and explain. So absolutely these kinds of experiences can trigger um, personal experiences mm. of of domestic violence or abuse, even if it wasn't um, physical in your own relationship because mm. science shows us that when there's non-physical abuse from someone who's significant to us, it lights up the same area of the brain as where physical abuse happens. Mm. So it's as if we've been physically assaulted yes. when those looks, those words, the tone of the voice, the actions that um, deny us our reality or our rights. So, mm -hmm. yeah, take care of yourself. You're really important and absolutely reach out. I was doing things on my own for so long and I imagine you were the same. And it's like when you reach out, it's like such a difference, isn't it? Yeah. And what that that reason that why I brought up that is because um the perpetrator this time is a man and most of the people that who were hurt was women. And I can imagine how many of us that been through domestic violence can image ourselves as one of those victims. Okay, I'm talking about very brutal reality. It is in the back of my mind too. So it is true that, so that's why I brought that up. Okay, it's not about relationship or things like that. It's more about the underlying issue that we could be triggered at, that we don't understand why we're feeling that way. That's what this recording is for. It's just to help you to understand those underlying issues that you may not be able to speak up before, you may not resonate it before, because your brain literally just shut it down because that's what happened to me too. I shut it down so many information and so many trauma in my life, not until my adult years that I have the bravery to go and starting to sort them out. And I did it not because of anyone else. I didn't did do, I don't have kids. I have a cat, like she, she's my love, but um, like that, that's pretty much it. Like I'm grateful that I don't have kids that I can pass on all the pain to because it is true. Like uh, as a parent, if we don't heal ourselves properly, our kids can see it. You think that they don't know, they know everything. They are a lot smarter than we than we think they could be. And that's why that we need to look after ourselves so we can like talk about the situation to your kids, share with them, ask them how are they feeling? How are they actually dealing with it? Because yes, social media online is very easy to find. Even I was actually trying to stay upstairs when I'm trying to look on the news when my uh, partner's stepdaughter, like my stepdaughter is actually downstairs. Like I wanted to make sure that she's not involved into it because I don't have an answer for her at that moment. I don't know how to explain it to her. So if you are a parent that who needs to explain this sort of situation to your kids, um, uh, what are some of the advice that you can you can tell the parents um, about this, Anita? Yeah, it's such an important point saying that we need to be able to have the conversations because when we have the conversations, then our children know, oh, this isn't a forbidden topic. We can mm. talk about it. 
and it's mm. really fine to not know how to be with it with your children because that models for the children that you don't have to know everything, um, that it's about being able to just talk and name because um, it's, it's not that you've got to have lots of skills. It's just mm. if you can help your children be able to name the unbearable feeling or the unthinkable mm. thought that gets activated for them with that, then it frees up their system and, again, hug them so mm. that they can feel your life energy and mm. um, be with um, appreciation and be with the the world sometimes doesn't make sense yes. and be able to not try and have to find an answer for everything because we tend to have our perceptions and our beliefs but they don't necessarily match for someone else. So if mm. we can help our children build their emotional muscle to be with the unknown and not have to try and make sense of everything because not everything makes sense in life. Yes. Abuse doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah, Violence doesn't make sense. And we like to try and, you know, when I spoke at the start about getting a sense of control mm. away from that shock and the helplessness, we want to try and make meanings about things so that we make sense of it so that we can feel a sense of control and if we can build help our children and model it for ourselves of build that emotional muscle to be able to um be with the the unknown and just make peace with that that's helpful but all of the suggestions that i gave are things that yep. you can with children as well the butterfly yeah. cap depending on the age of the child if they're younger you can actually alternate tap on their knees slowly and gently and just talk while you're talking to them about what's going on and it will help their brain and their body keep processing. So that's a way of being able to just alternate slowly, gently tapping on the knees mm. while they're talking about how they're feeling and what they're thinking. Mm. But you can do this with your children as well. Yeah. And many years ago, because my children are adults, I'm a grandmother now, but many years ago when my one of my daughters was on the computer when the in the days of MSN, I think it was called, mm -hmm. an ad came up and it was one of those ads where a horrific face appeared on the screen mm -hmm. and it terrified her and the terror of it shocked her system and she couldn't get that image out of her head. Mm -hmm. So I did with her... Um, a version of, of this or on her knees yeah. to help her to help shift that from that shock imprint mm. so you know we can do those things and it cleared it you know the the sooner you do it the less you have to do it I just did it once with her and it was all gone mm. um, so there are ways the body can shift things quickly when it gets the support that it needs that is so, beautiful there's a, a variety using those things with your children can be really helpful, but just allowing them to name it mm. and you not fall apart or shut it down or yes. trying to explain it away. We often try to explain things away to get out of the feeling and get into the head because we feel more control yes. if we're talking about it rather than being in the feeling. But yes. if we can stay in the feeling of it and just be with it, our system can get to a better feeling place. Mm, that is beautiful. So I hope that during this session that we have addressed at quite a few points, such as our own personal chart, uh, past, our own trauma, how to deal with triggers, some of the simple activities that you can do at home, how to deal with the other side of things of being a woman, being in abusive marriage, or uh, how to talk to your kids. So there's a lot of information that we jam pack into this short recording today. But don't worry, if you need more help, feel free to reach out to Anita or myself to have a girlfriend track. That's what I always say, just a girlfriend track, just to go and, and, and have someone to talk to, because I know we are getting more lonely and lonely in this society, even that there's social media and all the groups that is going on, but we do feel alone. So what you don't have to, because that's what we're here for, for you. Thank you, Anita, once again, for giving me your valuable time and giving me your sharing. We look forward to having you back on our show, on our interviews to tell us a bit more 
more about what you do. So thank you for all the audience and our listeners to listening into this special episode of the guest speaking interview. I look forward to seeing you all next time. Lie in peace, look after yourself. Thank you. Thank you.